Hello, everybody, and welcome back to another video today. I'm going to be jumping ahead a little bit to four years down the line, and I'm going to be doing a hypothetical election scenario between current Vice President Kamala Harris and the vice presidential nominee on the Republican ticket, J.D. Vance. Now, obviously, the election for 2024 between Trump and what is supposedly Joe Biden at the moment, although he's currently, people are trying to currently replace him, is about 100 days away. That is going to be the main focus of this channel in the, over the next 100 and some odd days. Uh, however, I want to take a moment and think about down the line what we could be looking at in a 2028 hypothetical election scenario. Now, keep in mind, anything is possible in 20 in four years. Nobody knows what things will look like four years down the line. I don't think anybody four years ago really thought that it, it could be a rematch. I mean, certainly people assumed it could be a rematch or we could be in this sort of situation as a country where Biden is currently trying to be replaced. Trump is currently under assassination threat attempts. Of course, Biden is as well, but Trump actually was inches away from losing his life. Um, I don't think anybody can predict what will be four years down the line. However, this is just a snapshot in history where we think we could possibly be with the current incumbent vice president and the possible future vice president, although in my mind, the likely future vice president, given the fact that I think Trump's going to win this election uh, at this point in time, facing off against each other in a 2028 scenario. With that being said, let's just get right into this prediction. Safe Harris State is obviously from the state of California. I think she would manage to win it by a safe state. Now, Oddly enough, J.D. Vance is probably going to be more of a, uh, I wouldn't say divisive figure, but more of a polarizing figure as opposed to Trump. I think Trump is an oddly unifying candidate. Um, and with that, I do think he's going to perform really well uh, in 2024. Um, and he did in 2020, even with the fact that he lost the election. I think that with all of what was going on in the country, with COVID, with the BLM riots, with just everything, that all the onslaught against Trump, he still managed to do a pretty good job. He only lost the election by a total of 40,000 votes in three states combined, Wisconsin, Arizona, and Georgia. It was a very close election electorally with the margins, keeping in mind. Um, and of course, he did very good against Hillary Clinton. Out of all the Republicans that ran in 2016, I think Trump performed the best. I think Vance is a very good candidate. However, I, we've yet to see how he can perform on a national level. Of course, we've never seen any polls between him and Harris. But I think that it's going to be more of a clear divide between these two politically. Uh, in general. So for that reason, I'm going to keep states like Oregon in that safe category, as well as states like New York. I think the only reason New York is competitive right now is actually kind of to the Democrats' detriment for the fact that they uh, indicted him in New York and Trump had to basically be campaigning there for some time. He went to the bodega, he was in the Bronx, he traveled across the city and the state and met a lot of people. And I think that, that helped his, uh, his standing in New York. Of course, he was from New York originally, but... Um, I think that helped create more enthusiasm. Also, given the fact that Joe Biden is wildly unpopular across the nation, he has a very low approval rating. In 2028, there will be no incumbents allowed to basically run for president uh, at that point in time because Trump will not be going for another term constitutionally unless the Constitution changes. With J.D. Vance, you could see Texas become a little bit more competitive. However, states like Iowa and Ohio will solidify as safe states. You will expect Trump to be campaigning for Vance on the ticket as well as Maine's 2nd Congressional District. Sorry, I forgot to include um, Maine's 1st District as a solid Vance. Now, for J.D. Vance, you could think possibly he could be tick, uh, picking a vice president uh, like Glenn Youngkin. Now, who knows where we'll be at that time. He could pick somebody else, but Glenn Youngkin would help J.D. Vance's appeal, especially among moderates, suburban women, people in Virginia, North Carolina, that, that area of the country, or somebody like Marco Rubio, or somebody completely else. I don't really think it would be Vance Ramaswamy. That just, they're two of the same. Although Trump and Vance similar, very much with regard to Vivek and J.D. Anyway, 149 to 185. Let's head into our likely Kamala Harris states. Uh, that'll be the state of Colorado, as well as Maine at large, I don't really see J.D. Vance being too popular in the Northeast, um, but that's going to be it for the likely Kamala Harris states. With regard to J.D. Vance, likely Vance states, that'll be the state of Florida. Um, in my opinion, that'll also be the state of North Carolina. Leave Texas out of the equation for now, so a very close election, 197 to 195. Lean Harris states will be New Mexico, and Virginia will lean in favor of Kamala Harris, getting her to 215 electoral votes lean. Uh, J.D. Vance states. This will be the state of Texas. This will be the state of North Carolina. Republicans are beginning to perform very well among Hispanics, as well as the state of Arizona getting Vance to 252 electoral votes. I also see... Um, I'm going to stop it there, actually. Now, lean... Excuse me. Tilt Kamala Harris states. The state of Minnesota would tilt in favor of Kamala Harris. Nebraska's 2nd Congressional District 
would tilt in favor of Kamala Harris. Let's give Judy Vance, state of Wisconsin, by a tilt margin, getting the 262 electoral votes. With Kamala Harris, I think she'd actually end up tilting Georgia. A lot of black support in the state of Georgia. She probably would pick a VP like Wes Moore or Gavin Newsom or Gretchen Whitmer. All good picks. Um, and I do think she would have that appeal in Georgia. I think she helped Biden win it back in 2020, although uh, it's going to be much harder for them to win it again in 2024. Vance, in my opinion, however, at this point in time, at this snapshot in history, you know, people like to pull up videos from four years ago and say, this is my ultimate prediction for 2028. That's not the case, of course. That's just This is just hypothetical. Would clear the Rust Belt and win the presidency. 296 to 244, uh, 242, a relatively close presidential election, not the closest in history but a pretty close election in the case where both candidates are in the 200th electoral votes. Uh, definitely not a landslide election, something I think you could be looking at this time around. However, you know, you don't want to count your birds before they hatch, um, count your eggs before they hatch. Um, and when I say landslide, I mean mid to upper 300s uh, in terms of modern landslide. I don't think we're going to see 400 plus electoral landslides in quite a while. It's possible, but I just don't think it'll happen in quite a while last time was 1988 with George H.W. Bush. Anyway, thank you for watching the video. Make sure to subscribe to the YouTube channel. Let me know your thoughts on this prediction in the comments below, and have a good day.